On this episode of Under the Radar, we're back in Grand Rapids for a family that's juicing their way to a new and healthy life. We'll also eat one of the best tacos made by man and visit a zoo so cool, you'll wish you were an animal. Then we tour the town of South Haven. You'll meet a couple who fell in love over their love of food and even go to a racetrack where you can drive your dream car right off your bucket list. Get ready to explore the cool people, places, and things that make Michigan a great place to be. Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, investing in people, places, and partnerships to help transform Michigan and the Michigan economy. In cities, towns, and neighborhoods, people are building better places to live and better communities. We all have one, that perfect spot, a special place we go to smooth out the ripples of the day. Our perfect spot is calling. Our perfect spot is pure Michigan. Your trip begins at michigan.org. And by Big B Coffee, celebrating 18 years as a Michigan company. Gift cards, mugs, and coffee by the pound available in store and online. Franchise info available at biggby.com. The Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure series raises funds and awareness in the breast cancer fight celebrates survivorship, and honors those who have lost their battle. Everyone is welcome. Find a Komen Race for the Cure in more than 140 cities at Komen.org. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar, Michigan. Well, we're back in Grand Rapids, and for a very good reason. Actually, for three very good reasons. Picking only three things to feature is always a challenge in Grand Rapids because there's so much happening here. Every time we come back, more inspired and motivated people are doing incredible things. If you haven't experienced this great city, it's time you did. You won't find a better place to live, eat, work, play, or stay in the entire US of A. Grand Rapids really does have something for everybody. And last time I checked, Everybody includes you. Grand Rapids is located in Western Lower Michigan, just 30 minutes from all points a half hour away. Now, if you want to drink every day and still feel good about yourself, you got to find the right bar. And in Grand Rapids, we found a great one. In the heart of Grand Rapids new downtown market, you'll find Malamaya Juice Bar. It's a cool and colorful place where the fruits and vegetables of labor are turned into healthy beverages that will totally surprise you with their taste. Jermall and Anissa Eddy wanted to share a healthier lifestyle with both their family and all of Western Michigan. Okay, fess up. Whose bright idea was it to start a juice bar? It was Anissa's idea. It was your idea? Out yeah. loud, anyway. I thought about it in my head, but she kind of said it, and I was like, whoo, yes! She always wanted to start something, and so I was like, what about a juice bar? Well, I understand it's very, very, very healthy. Why is that? Just the concentrated nutrients? Yeah, so obviously everybody pretty much knows fruits and veggies are good for you. But the reason that it's so good for you when you do it in the juice form or a smoothie is because you're getting such a concentrated amount. Now, are there any don'ts when you're juicing? I mean, because I, I'll be honest with you, once I tried to make my own V8 juice. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah, it was terrible. So. Yeah. No, I mean, juicing is really, it's kind of based on your own palate and what you like. Um, you definitely want to drink your juice as soon as possible just to get the most nutritional value from it. So that's certainly something to remember. It's also good to kind of swish it around in your mouth. There's some enzymes even in our own saliva that just get those nutrients really alive and doing what they need to do. Just in a couple of words, what's your philosophy for this place? For this place, I mean, I, I can think of some values that we have at home that we instill here, which is uh, integrity, excellence, and kindness. And those three words to me sum up what we want to portray here, what we want our employees to, to utilize and to think about when they're thinking about the business. And I think keeping in mind those three values I just mentioned keeps us going. It keeps them going so that they know they're making that type of impact in the community. You guys are good for the, the mind, body, and soul. That's it. If you're still not convinced how tasty and good for you these juices are, just ask Malachi. He'll be happy to tell you. So Malachi, I understand you have something to tell me. Well, I do have something to tell you. Smoothies and juices are really yummy. And tell ya. You can have it when you're going on a trip. And tell ya. You can have it when you're going somewhere special. And tell ya. 
Like this rise and shine one has oranges in it. Oranges are bright. Because these juices are so darn good, they're worth talking about till you're thirsty for the next one. So I'll see you later from Malachi and Malachi Juice Bar. Good job. You can have your juice now. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks, Malachi. If you're a fan of food from below the border that's the real deal, sometimes you got to go under the radar and find out where the locals eat. And you know us, we totally did. Juan Barajas owns and operates La Taqueria San Jose. And if you're looking for a raw, real, authentic, and genuine Mexican taco, you came to the right place. There's no frills here, just an honest and sincere family making some of the best food on this side of any border. So how did you discover this place? Well, I moved here four years ago from Chicago when I was driving down to Vision, and I was looking for an authentic Mexican restaurant, and uh, it looked like it had great promise, so I stopped in. It's a total family affair in there. Yeah, they're very friendly. They get to know you by name once you've been here more than a couple of times, and uh, they look forward to having you come in. And the atmosphere? The atmosphere is really quaint and quiet. Uh, it, typically known as a hole-in-the-wall kind of restaurant, but uh, don't let that scare you because the food is top shelf. It's straightforward Mexican food. It's, you know, it's very simple, you know, good flavors, cilantro, onion, you don't need cheese, you don't need tomatoes, nothing like that. It's just straightforward, good tacos. Better than my mom's. Oh, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're in trouble now, little mister. Yeah. Juan does everything the way he learned back in Mexico. And lucky for us, He's now making his home right here in Grand Rapids. So Juan, I understand that you make one of the best tacos ever made by a man. Well, it's a people like say, so that's, that's, that's good. What, that's what I've heard. Yeah, wow, well, that's good, I like it. <laughs> What's the secret to making such a good, authentic taco? Well, the secret is working with a heart, working together. Because it's a, you're, it's a family affair. That's a family. Yeah, your place. brother's in there, your daughter's in there. My sister's coming too. My wife, you know, my niece. Right. It's so a it's... family place. And not only is Juan's whole family wonderful, they're brave too. His daughter Myra actually let me in the kitchen. So do you cook a lot with those red, those red peppers right there? Almost at a time, too. Yeah, those, those are hot, aren't they? Yeah. You know how I know that? Because I just ate one by accident, and I can, I'm can i having trouble talking. Yeah, sometimes they're really hot, and yeah. sometimes they're not so hot. Now, how do you like working with uh, your dad? It's hard at times. <laughs> it's really hard working with family, but, you know, it's really nice to know that we're helping him in sustaining his business, because we've grown up with him and know that he's always wanted a business. and. It's really nice to see how he's doing really good and how people are really supporting us, you know. And But it's hard. He's my dad. What do you think makes the food so special here? Um, that they cook with the heart. They cook with their heart. Yeah. And they're filling up a lot of people's tummies. Yes. I think your cactus is burning. No, not yet. Well, you can only talk about food for so long before hunger sets in. So we finally got to sit down and enjoy some of the best tacos we could remember. Heck, we liked the food and the family so much, we even remembered to come back the next day for lunch. Now, if you're looking for a place where you can live, laugh, and learn about the natural world around you, a zoo is a great place to go. And this is a great one. Just west of downtown Grand Rapids, you'll find one of the most awesome zoos this side of the jungle. The John Ball Zoo combines a modern approach to caring for animals with a rich history of giving back to this great community. While we gained some altitude into the park, I had the pleasure of getting to know Brenda Stringer. She's a big part of why this place is so special. Tell me a little bit about the zoo. So there really was a John Ball. Yeah, John Ball gave the original land. He left us 40 acres in his will for public purposes. Um, and so that was in 1884. People started using it as a park. The original 40 acres was the hill the zoo is on, and then that land got expanded over time. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah. So there's quite a bit of history here. There's a lot of history. Here. And there's quite a bit of altitude we're getting here as well. I mean, I didn't realize this area was so hilly, but so this takes you up into the canopy of the forest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, I come here just for this ride. <laughs> I, I, mean, I haven't seen an animal yet, I'm still having fun. Up top, we discovered one of the coolest habitats for man or beast. The forest environment you walk through up here is very cool. And after a bit of, well, goofing around, Brenda got me up close and personal with one of my favorite creatures. So oh, this is a brand new exhibit? This, this just opened this summer. We opened it in June. And, and this is the forest habitat of our Tigers of the Realm exhibit. And explain the difference between a 
a regular habit and a soft habitat? Well, this is a very soft scape. This is a very natural exhibit, and we tried as much as we can just to fence it in, give the tigers what they need, like the pool, some places to get up on rocks. We wanted to keep the mature trees, um, you know, and make it safe, make good viewing for the visitor, but just to, to be very easy on the landscape and try to keep it as natural as we could. What's wonderful about what zoos are doing now is they're being so mindful of the animals and mm -hmm. giving them natural habitats so they're not in right. cages anymore. They're actually roaming around free right. and they can go from, air, mm -hmm. like you said, area to area. There's just something magical about tigers. There's something about them that... You know, they're almost mystical. They really are. And I think part of that, too, is they're so big, they're so dramatic looking, but also they are solitary animals. They like to be left alone. They like to be left alone. I hear you, buddy. Mm -hmm. yeah, I hear you. they do. After some quality time with one of the world's most majestic land mammals, we were walking along the beautiful zoo pathway when suddenly I saw them. Camel rides? Yes, please. You sure it's safe? Oh, it's safe. No, I mean for the camel. Oh, definitely. <laughs> okay. And as always, I was great at it right away. Yeah, camel, yeah. <laughs> wow, this I had no idea I'd get to do this. Have you ever rode a camel before? No, this is a first time experience for me. To be able to ride a camel was something I was totally not expecting. But it was so cool, when I come back, <laughs> I totally expect to do it again. As we walked through the zoo, every habitat Brenda showed me was cooler than the one before. And the way the zoo is designed and laid out, every exhibit is tucked away into its own little forest environment. This is one of the most incredible habitats I have ever seen. It's a beautiful habitat. It's one of the bigger chimpanzee habitats you're going to see in the country. Um, this exhibit was built in 2001. I mean, and it was gorgeous from the beginning, but every year it just gets more and more gorgeous. Well, this is so beautiful, it makes me want to be a chimp. I mean, this is just, you've got the 20-foot waterfall, you've got the little canyon right, here. Right, It's just absolutely incredibly natural. Yeah. And I can tell they're enjoying it. Yeah, he, he, he looks like the camp elder. It looks like he's, uh, get off my property! Hello! No, he doesn't care. <laughs> he's not impressed. Our morning at the zoo really was an awesome experience. So if you want to learn more about the animals that inhabit this planet, inhabit your car and plan a family expedition to the John Ball Zoo. And if you're looking for a healthy, all-natural juice to wash down those four incredible tacos you just so vigorously ingested, come to Grand Rapids. They've got the three things we just showed you and about 11 billion more. If you're looking for a beautiful waterfront community south of heaven, I think you'll find it in South Haven. When we pulled into the Old Harbor Inn in South Haven and saw not only how nice it was, but that it was also right on a marina, I knew this was gonna be a great trip. This is one of Michigan's best boating communities and we were spending the night right in the middle of it. Perfect. As for the rest of town, it's your quintessential classic resort beach town and it's vibrant year round. You couldn't ask for a more beautiful or relaxing place to live, play or stay. And that's exactly what we did. South Haven is located in the western lower mitten on the shores of Lake Michigan, halfway between Saugatuck and Benton Harbor. Now if you really want to get to know a town, you need to sit down with someone who truly loves it. And when it comes to South Haven, you won't find anyone with more enthusiasm or love than local CVB director Lisa Shanley. When people ask you about where you live, you must have a blast talking about this town. You know, there's a lot of things you could be doing, Tom, but when you think about what is one of the best jobs in the world, yeah. I mean, it's not hard to promote such a beautiful place. Well, it's, it, I mean, the beach here, I know this town isn't just about the beach and the water, but oh my gosh, what you have here is incredible. Yeah, and, and it's really something because we live here and we see it every day, but it's never anything that we take for granted because if you go to beaches throughout the U.S. or uh, overseas, the, the color of the sand, the width of the beach, the Great Lakes as a backdrop, and you'll see uh, we're really known for a lot of our historic resorts and bed and breakfast, many of which were built in the late 1800s or early 1900s. It's just spectacular to see all that, so it really kind of lends a diversity as well to the area. Well, now, this is probably one of the most perfect little vacation towns in Michigan, but why is this also a great place to live? Yeah, we really are starting to see a lot more people come here not to 
just vacation because they fall in love with it. And you know, it's kind of like you could stay a night, you can stay a week, or you can stay a lifetime. And a lot of people are kind of checking the lifetime off their list because we have close proximity to major markets. We have all the amenities in many cases that you would find in a big city, less the hassle, so there's no traffic. And then you have the beach and the lake and the bike paths, it's just all kind of coming together. Not just a beautiful destination in the summer, but the fall is beautiful as well. Lisa sure knew a lot, but one thing she didn't know is how much we eat on this show. So as usual, we set out in search of a good story and a great meal, and we found both. You know, someone told me about a restaurant here in town where the food tastes really good, but the problem is I can't remember the name. Oh, that's it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Taste is a relatively new restaurant here in South Haven that proves positive that the way to the heart really is through the stomach. Joel and Heidi Geshikowski are two passionate food people who found each other, opened a restaurant, and are now sharing their culinary creations with this entire community. A little birdie told me that this restaurant started with a bit of a romantic story. Who wants to tell that? I will let Heidi tell you that. Okay, so I was a bartender um, at the restaurant that was before this, and a uh, south side Chicago boy came strolling through the front door and I served him a drink and the rest was history. So oh. love at first libation, right? Yes, you had a drink, exactly he fell in is. love. <laughs> Who fell in love first? I did. You really? You were, you were smitten? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you were a chef from Chicago. You were up here on vacation or what? Yeah. Just came to town, got a drink, and met this lovely young lady. And now, what, six years later, we own Taste and Everything's going good. Now, you're a classically trained chef or yes. self-taught? Classic. Right? A little bit of both. I started really young. Um, my parents tell me at the age of 10, I started cooking. They would leave me cook, uh, directions to pre start preparing dinner uh, while everybody was still in school at work. I was the first one home from school. So a little bit of both classically trained and a lot of self-taught. Now, what made you decide on the theme of Small plates, it's small plates, large martinis, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we, me and her have been eating, um, how do I explain it? Um, that's we go how into we a, eat. yeah, that's how we eat. We go into a restaurant and instead of getting your um, typical protein, starch, and vegetable, yeah. we like to experience a wide variety of somebody's menu. So we pretty much attack the appetizer section and we would split. Anywhere between four or five appetizers, and just you know, it's a bunch of different flavors and experiences in one dinner setting. Well, describe I know it's small place, but describe your philosophy on food here and what, what you serve. My cooking philosophy is actually very simple. Um, my food has a lot of flavor, but I let the main ingredient speak for itself. What I mean by that is I use um, herbs and spices to complement the actual main ingredient, not to hide that main ingredient. Now you guys are both transplants? Yes. yes. You were from mm -hmm. here, what do you love about this town? Oh, I absolutely love it. It's, you have the most beautiful view within walking distance from everywhere. It's absolutely gorgeous here. There's miles and miles of beaches. The people are awesome. Um, they've embraced us and the restaurant as well. So um, we really, we just, I mean, there's too many things to say about this town. Awesome. Now, you guys been working together for how many years now? Um, well, two. Two, two years. years. Yeah. yeah, two okay. years. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Every, Every day. day. Home yeah. and work. Mm -hmm. You guys, still, you guys <laughs> still in love? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wouldn't change a thing. Yep, there's a lot of love in this place, especially for the food. Just ask the lovely people who love to eat it. The menu, the service, you just couldn't ask for a better place, and we're so proud of them that they've done so well a young couple starting out, and it, it's a great place to be. The atmosphere is wonderful. Yeah. We've got the lake outside the window. Joel and Heidi are always here to greet you. The food is fabulous. Small plates with a big variety. It always comes out fresh, and the service is terrific. And if you're looking for a really unbiased testimonial, just ask this lovely lady. I've tried just about everything on the menu. Everything is delicious. Uh, this has been my son's dream ever since he was a little boy. Wait a minute, you're his mom? Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> I knew it. So if you like food that tastes good and you want to get a taste for what everybody's talking about here in South Haven, come get a taste for the restaurant they call, uh, um, uh, oh boy.
Is going to a cool racetrack to drive expensive sports cars at a high rate of speed on your bucket list? Well, grab your bucket, throw it in the trunk, and drive your car at a responsible rate of speed to South Haven. Because for a few days every summer, Adventure Supercars comes to Ginger Man Raceway and lets regular Joes like you and me press the pedal to the metal on cars most of us can only dream of owning. And these guys don't mess around. They bring some major auto bling. And after a brief safety session, you get to attack the track just like the pros. Before driving my dream, I hopped a high-speed ride with Director of Operations Nick Izakovich. He took me out in a Mercedes SLS AMG and gave me some great insight into what drove these guys to do this. So whose crazy idea was it to let regular guys like me drive these uber expensive exotic sports cars? I think it was a, like a combined effort between all of us. Tell me the truth, these really are rich guys' cars that they think are being stored. But no, you guys, yeah. you guys get no, no unfortunately we don't do that, no. Yeah, no, we buy them all, they're all cars. And people can actually come here, guys like me, and get in a Mercedes, a Ferrari, and race it around on this incredible exactly. track. Exactly. Uh, what do you call this style of track? A road course. Road course, it's like two miles long. Yeah, so it's it's pretty tough for someone who's never been on there, so that's why we have their pace car, they come and follow their line, yeah. we put out cones for everyone, we actually have an instructor in the car as well, and it's really, really super safe, actually. We're going pretty fast, aren't we? We are going pretty fast. You ready to go faster? Fine, or faster. <laughs> what do you mean faster? How fast is faster? Let's see what this can do. Oh my gosh. Wait a minute, I thought we were going fast before. This is a, this is a little disconcerting. Oh, 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 my mustache, my mustache. So, tell me honestly, you do this because chicks dig guys who drive sports cars. Exactly. Yeah. You know, give me a couple years to practice, I could do this. Thanks, yeah, that sounds about right, a couple of years. <laughs> I actually thought I had a cool job <laughs> until I met you. I want to be you. Well, with a few passenger laps under my belt and my equilibrium completely rearranged, it was time for me to pick my pleasure. And I picked the Lamborghini Gallardo LP 550-2 Balboni edition, whatever that means. Then with Adventure Cars co-founder and CEO Alec Jurek as my wingman, I tore up the track Tom style. Okay, seat belt. Foot on brake, turn key. Yes, sir. What's that noise? Sound of destruction? The sound of destruction. <laughs> uh, don't say that, don't say that. <laughs> and before I knew it, we were off and running. All right, we're gonna stay all the way to the outside. All the way to Start the outside. turning it in more, turn it in more, turn it in more. Start to roll on the throttle. Roll onto it more, more, more. More gas, more gas. Floor it, floor it, floor it, all the way to the left. Floor it. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, Seriously? keep it going, keep it going. Come on, stay in it, you I gotta have more fun. It best I can. Turn it in, turn it into your left. Right, now yeah. full throttle. Full throttle, yeah. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Boy, when Alex wasn't hollering at me, he was a great instructor who really made this experience that much more awesomer. So don't just doze off and dream about driving your dream car. Find the guys from Adventure Supercars Get yourself to Ginger Man Raceway and make it a reality. Sure, these guys have a cool job, but look at us. We get to experience awesome adventures, taste great food, and visit beautiful towns like South Haven. Not too shabby, eh? Meanwhile, back at the track. Man to man, how am I doing? Honestly, great. You know why? Because you listen. That's what most important thing. And to keep going, keep going, going keep going, going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh! Yeah! What an exceptional experience. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey folks, you wanna become part of the League of Extraordinary UTR Super Friends? It's super easy, just go to utrmichigan.com. You can watch episodes, tell us where to go next, get information on all the places we've been and even get UTR wearables like I'm sporting right here. Oh, and you can even get our new book, Under the Radar, The First 50, featuring our first 50 episodes and DVDs of all of our shows. So become a UTR super friend today. Go to utrmichigan.com. It's super cool and super easy. Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, investing in people, places, and partnerships to help transform Michigan and the Michigan economy. In cities, towns, and neighborhoods, People are building better places to live and better communities. We all have one, that perfect spot, a special place we go to smooth out the ripples of the day. Our perfect spot is calling. Our perfect spot is pure Michigan. Your trip begins at michigan.org. And by Big B Coffee, 
Celebrating 18 years as a Michigan company. Gift cards, mugs, and coffee by the pound available in store and online. Franchise info available at BIGGBY.com. The Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure series raises funds and awareness in the breast cancer fight, celebrates survivorship, and honors those who have lost their battle. Everyone is welcome. Find a Komen Race for the Cure in more than 140 cities at Komen.org. 